the call to order the regular meeting of the East Point School Bo East Point Community Schools Board of Education, July 24th, 2023, at 6:30 p.m. Please call the roll. Here. 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 Mrs. Rayford. Here. Mrs. Richardson. Excuse. And Mrs. Grumberg. Here. If we could all please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, is there a motion for approval of the agenda? Motion to approve the agenda as written. Support. Really supported. Okay. Please Mr. Forward. Grunberg. I mean, Mr. Roscoe. Yes. Dr. Early. Yes. Mr. Grunberg. Yes. Uh, Mr. Williams. Yes. Mrs. Rayford. No. Mrs. Richardson, oh, she's excused, and Mrs. Grumberg. Yes. Motion carries. Next, we have consent agenda. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? Motion to approve the consent agenda as written. Support. Any comments or questions? Please call the vote. Mr. Roscoe. Yes. Dr. Early. Yes. Ms. They're growing better. Yes. Mr. Williams, yes. Mrs. Rayford. No. Mrs. Richardson, excuse. Mrs. Groomberg. Yes. Motion carries. Good evening. I, I'd like to turn it over to Assistant Superintendent Fleming um, to introduce. We have a number of candidates that are, excuse me, we'll hold off and let you take your next action, and then we'll turn it over to Mrs. Fleming. Oh. Next, we have administrative new hires, E. Is there a motion to approve the administrative new hires as presented? I make a motion to support the administrative new hires. Support. Support. Thank you. Yeah. You're the one calling the vote, and you couldn't vote. beat them? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing something. <laughs> okay. Mr. Roscoe, I mean, Dr. Early. Yes. Mr. Roscoe. Yes. Mr. Grunberg. Yes. Um, Mr. Williams, yes. Mrs. Rayford. Yes. Mrs. Richardson, excused. And Mrs. Grunberg. Yes. Motion carries. Superintendent's report. Uh, thank you so much. Prior to starting my report, I'd like to turn it over to Ms. Fleming, Assistant Superintendent, to introduce um, some candidates we have in the audience this evening. Thank you again so much for your support tonight. I'd like to introduce um, three of our administrative uh, new hires who've decided to join us tonight. Mr. Todd Yarch is taking over as our new high school principal. Mr. Yarch actually has spent five, the last five years of his career here in East Point uh, as the principal of Eaton Academy. Um, and prior to that, he spent 18 years doing great work in Chicago public schools. Uh, his, He's got a wealth of knowledge around STEM, CTE, um, school turnarounds, and we are really um, excited to have him join our team. So, welcome. Thank you. Our next candidate is Morgan Reese. She's a familiar face in East Point because she served the last year under Principal Malone at East Point Middle School. So, um, Morgan is now our new uh, middle school principal. And uh, she does come to us certified in administration. She has a, a history of teaching middle school and special education and social studies. She did phenomenal work as a dean at the middle school last year. And she will be carrying forward the torch of the middle school success. So welcome, Morgan, to our team. Welcome. welcome. And lastly, Dr. Sheila Sherman. Dr. Sherman comes to us from Pontiac, but she has a wealth of experience across the board from teaching to principalship, curriculum and instruction, DEI, and she is uh, human resource certified. She specializes in Title IX, in uh, labor relations, and uh, we look forward again to having her join our team as the HR director. Thank you. 
Thank you so much for those introductions, Ms. Fleming. Um, this evening's superintendent report. Uh, we have a high school summer program. We've got about 200 students participating in the credit recovery at the high school. Uh, the program is virtual, but staff are seeing uh, 40 to 45 students, um, and they choose to come in and work. Um, and again, we are working on repairing some credits that were previously lost uh, so that children can be on track to graduate. Thank you to the staff at East Point High School. You can also see in this picture that the new carpet has been installed um, at East Point High School's Media Center. Um, and this is funded with our ESSER three money. All media centers and all of our schools will be receiving new carpet and furniture for our media centers. Next up, we have our K-8 summer program. It is happening at the campus of East Point Middle School. Um, we have over 224 students participating in summer program. Um, and there's great things happening. You can see slime, uh, learning and fun. It's wonderful in the morning to see all the kids running into summer programming. And I had a teacher stopped me today in the hallway and said, my goal is that I don't have to see any of the kids that are coming to summer program in the, in the fall and for the rest of the school year because I'm gonna make sure that they are all caught up and that they are reading at their grade level. Um, so I love the passion of our teachers um, that give so generously of themselves for the summer program. We thank you and thank you families for sharing all your students with us. Here's another series of pictures. I'd like to highlight um, the student teacher we have here on the right hand side. She's a recent graduate of Cusno, but is engaged in our teacher cadet program. She's curious about becoming a teacher and so she's been joining us. And apparently at recess, she's uh, well liked by all the little girls because she has uh, long hair, but uh, she's doing a fantastic job getting to learn about being a teacher um, in the schools. And thank you again for all that you do for our students this summer. Um, we've gotten some questions about the bond project. Um, as the community knows, on August 8th, uh, you will have the opportunity to possibly support the bond project. Um, questions are answered um, by emailing the superintendent uh, directly, completing the online survey connected to our website, or calling the office of the superintendent. Two recent questions, we have more than that on the next slide, but two recent questions about the interest rate on a bond and how a bond works came up um, from the community. And I've asked Robert Carlesso to talk a little bit more about how bonds work. Um, and I can tell you that in simple terms, you know, we're going to the community for $36.4 million. Um, but anytime you get a loan on a investment, you could expect to pay interest on your principal. It might be the same as buying a house and you haven't saved all of the money to buy the house yet, but you get a home mortgage loan. Um, so Robert, could you tell us, did I just steal your yeah, thunder? Yeah, you did, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> could you talk more about what a bond is and right. how that works, please? So uh, you could think of a bond as a home mortgage. Um, the district has over $50 million of identified improvements that need to be made. We had a, a study done by an architectural firm who toured each one of our buildings with a team of engineers and identified, you know, uh, heating and cooling issues, uh, improvements to plumbing, those type of things, roofs, inspected all our roofs, and we have a, a list of needs that are identified. We get a little bit of money through sinking funds, so we started some of those projects, but it's not nearly enough. So in order to like make an impact, we need to borrow some money. Uh, and our, you know, when we go to our underwriter, our bond council firm, they identified that we have the capacity to borrow $36.4 million. By doing that, we would keep the mills, the, the millage rate that we, uh, that our taxpayers uh, pay via their property taxes at 3.5 mills. Now this 3.5 mills is gonna cover the existing debt that we have on our books and this new $36.4 million bond. And this, this is paid over a number of years. And, you know, there's gonna be different uh, different um, 
maturity dates within that bond. So like technology would be a shorter maturity date, like three, possibly four or five years. And other projects within it have a, a little bit longer maturity. But the maximum maturity would be 25 years for the bond. Uh, and we pay principal and interest uh, twice a year, uh, May and November. Uh, the interest rate at this time, we, we think it'll be 4.72%. That's subject to change, you know, depending on the market. Um, we, we'll, we plan on, at this point, borrowing the money in two different, they call them series or installments. So initially, if the bond passes, we would borrow about $18 million. We would invest that money at, at current market rates so we have some type of uh, revenue stream from that. And as we have to make contract payments to our contractors, we pull that money out and make those payments. So the money is put to work you know, in, in an investment account until it's actually needed. And then uh, that interest you know, is just added, it reduces the cost of the project in essence. You know, we can use it you know, to pay for, uh, for new things or use it to you know, pay down the loan over time. Um, we anticipate we'll get about 1.5% investing that money. Um, and then about two to three years later, we would borrow the remainder of the money. Uh, there's no sense in borrowing $36 million up front uh, when you don't need that amount of money. So, and interest rates can change over time as well. Well, it'll change up until the point we go to market. Okay. Uh, after that, it's locked in. Yep. After the series is done and gone to market, yes. then the rate is locked. Correct. In. Correct. Thank um, you, Mr. Carlosso. Yes. <laughs> did you have, I'm sorry, did you have more? Um, so I, I just, uh, like, the, the approval for the loan is like, we're asking our voters to approve this loan. It's not like they don't have input into it. Their input is whether they want to see these improvements made in the district or not. So they do have representation as far as, you know, what their tax dollars will be spent for. The other piece I think about how we elicited information was principals, um, principals hear parent concerns, hear community concerns, and then the central office team listens to those concerns and adapts. One of the biggest areas of concern we had over the past year was the traffic flow around our elementary schools. Right. And as we've talked about, uh, there can be a big traffic backup on David uh, for about 20 minutes at the end of each day as the Early Learning Center um, lets out. So the feedback is that that's an inconvenience to the community. And so the school district is then responsive to that feedback. In addition, we, uh, we got community input through surveys. Uh, so as our residents, staff, uh, you know, stakeholders in the community, when we went out for our ESSER 3 money, that was a requirement of getting ESSER 3. And there were a number of things, but tied for the lead was improvements in our building and facilities. Mm -hmm. so, and that's what we can you know, take care of, a, a good chunk of that with this bond. Sure. Um, well, the, probably the most important question as a taxpayer in this community is, um, I just paid off my house, so it used to be my taxes were included as part of my house payment, right? So now I had to pay summer taxes. So now I'm wondering, what effect is this going to have on my taxes that I paid this year as compared to, ne compared to next year? Well, did you have an escrow? No, no, no. I'm saying I actually paid my property taxes oh, this year because I finally home. paid my house off at the end of last right. year. So, you threw so my taxes, this will not have any impact on how much I pay in property taxes. Not on the rate you pay. Not on the rate. On the va if your house goes up or down in value, mm -hmm. that would change your, your, your payment. Yeah, but that's not as a result of the bond. Right. That's a result of my house going up and down. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So this bond doesn't have any effect on my property taxes whatsoever. Not, no. not, that, not in that respect. No. Uh, for the homeowner. Right. But so we, we so and, and so for renters so for renters out there too as well. I want to make sure they understand as well too that the homeowner. So even if you are not the homeowner, if the homeowner comes to you and says, "Hey, they just approved a bond. I got to raise your rent because my property taxes went up." Mm -hmm. Don't buy into it. Don't fall into that one. They say your rent's going up 50 bucks a month because my property taxes went up because we passed a bond. Don't buy that. So for all the renters, please remember that as well too. Okay, and for all the homeowners, your taxes are not going up. Okay, 
I consider this more, you, you say home loan and that's fine, but I consider it more like a refinance kind of deal. It is, it is you know, kind of, and what you're doing is actually, you're going to pay the same amount, but it's yeah. going to be pushed out a few years, yeah. but you, there is no increase to what you're paying. Right. The, um, the length of time okay. is approximately 27 years. Um, and what's happening to keep the no tax rate increase is we had a bond in 2009, and that amount is getting smaller and smaller. So we will begin to pull. Um, but we'll maintain 3.5 mils. So some, thank you, Mr. Sure. Carlos, so we appreciate that. Um, how will the community be kept informed about the progress of the bond work? We will continue to give regular updates to the Board of Education, our district website, our external communications, um, as well as the district Facebook page. Um, another question about when was the track at the high school last resurfaced? And our track was resurfaced in 2006. Um, a track surface typically lasts eight years. The current track surface is eight or nine years beyond its useful life. Um, what is the projected timeline for completion of the projects? Um, completion of all the projects could take up to five to six years. Um, specifications will need to be developed by professionals. And we are working with, we will work with our architectures and our engineers um, to bid out our projects. We did proactively ask because we had gotten questions previously about traffic flows. Um, so we chose two of our buildings that have the largest impact on neighborhood traffic. And we have two proposed site renderings uh, for making some shifts to the playground area and the parking area to improve um, drop off both at Crescentwood Elementary School there on the right where we have a proposal to um, create a one-way lane um, instead of just the singular entrance. And then the early learning center where we have a large number of parents who need to drop off students, we would be increasing the parking lot size to create additional flow at the early learning center. So those are two proposed, again, not finalized, but proposed renderings about traffic flow for two of our schools. I would like to welcome our new staff. I'd like to thank all of the involvement from the East Point staff over the summer. We have had teachers, paraprofessionals, principals, secretaries, central office staff involved in the hiring. Um, and the quality of the candidates that are coming in has been exceptional. Um, specifically for our administrative positions, we're very uh, blessed and happy to have the three candidates here with us this evening. And we're excited to welcome all of the candidates into the school. But again, a huge thank you to everybody who's been involved in the process this summer. Um, transportations and school start and end times. Um, start and end times for the K2 and 3-5 buildings will be adjusted slightly for the 23-24 school year. Forest Park and Crescentwood will have an 8.20 a.m. start time and a 3.15 release time. Bellevue and Pleasant View um, will remain at 8.05 to 3 o'clock p.m. We want to get this information out to our families as soon as possible. Why are the start and end times shifting this year? We will be making some improvements on our bus routes. Last year was a rocky start to the school year. We had a number of challenges with transportation. Um, we are simplifying the routes for increased efficiency, safety, and reliability. This year, all K-5 students would be riding the bus together. So families that have multiple children spread between two schools, all K-5 students would get picked up together, and we would drop off the older children at their school, and then the younger children at their school, and then reverse it at the end of the day. And um, we hope that this shift will help parents who have multiple children at different schools um, increase their ability to get out of the house in the morning. Um, we also hope that it will increase the safety for our youngest children, um, who often kindergartners are required to be picked up by family members. We're hoping that older siblings will be able to shepherd them home. Your bus stop locations and times will be shifting families. Uh, transportation will plan to share the new stops with families on or before August 21st. And as part of our strategic plan, um, goal number five, the district will be examining and asking for input over the course of first semester on the elementary structures. 
Currently, we have structures where we have 2K2 buildings and 235 buildings. We'll be asking our families and our community if they would like to keep that structure or if they would like the district to consider homogenizing and going to K-5 schools. So no decision made at this time, but we will be asking for parent and family input. And please start sharing the transportation shifts. Um, we will work to get these out more over the next month as we approach the start of the school year. Upcoming events, we have Gleaners this Thursday at East Point Middle School. August 8th is Election Day. Um, August 21st to the 22nd is our new Teacher Academy. Our teacher's first day back is August 23rd. And then Varsity Football kicks off at Dearborn Heights. Um, you, should you choose to attend the game, would also see our East Point Shamrocks in their new athletic um, apparel. Um, and August 28th would be the first day of school. It will be a half day for students. Um, and that concludes the superintendent's report this evening. Thank you. Next we have the proposed 2023-24 salary ranges and central office structure, human resources. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going too fast. Hearing the public, does anyone wish to be heard? Does anyone wish to be heard? And I know you know how this works, right? I definitely know how it works. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, I don't know what I want to talk about, to be honest, but I do want to talk about Dr. Early. I, well, I thought you knew how this worked. You're supposed to state your name first. Oh, Lord, Jesus. For I'm forgetting how it works. I'm sorry. I'm just going to city council <laughs> meeting. Good evening, everyone. My name is Amelia Ritter. I go to East Point High School. I am a freshman as of this year. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I want to thank Dr. Early for giving me a chance to come and work with her um, at the baby shower. It was very fun running in heels. It was very fun. I just wanted to say thank you, Dr. Early. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon. I am State Representative Kimberly Edwards. I did have a couple of questions, but I will meet with the superintendent to ask, ask all those questions because I have a lot from this meeting. Thank you for this opportunity to even come to this podium. But I also wanted to bring some great news from Lansing and what my office is working on. We're also we're working on a wonderful pilot project, which is to provide free menstrual project products to the communities, schools, actually. And we have some other updates, too, that I will share at a later date on the school aid budget. I'm looking forward to sharing those updates soon. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Good evening. Uh, Lincoln Stock, CFE president. I want to take an opportunity to say congratulations and welcome to our new administrative group, um, Mr. Yarsh, Ms. Brees, Dr. Sherman, uh, the union and I both and all look forward to working with y'all and uh, making East Point a, a successful place to be. I also wanted to take the opportunity to thank the board for the consideration they'll make this evening on the revision of the, of the salary schedule. It's been a lot of hard work that we've been dealing with um, and uh, we are in a contract and your willingness to to consider the changes that we need to make in order to be remain competitive to attract retain the best staff we possibly can is greatly appreciated by me and by those of us that are working with you so uh, I want to tell you that we need to continue to do it you know that um, it's something that's that's always has to be worked on but your willingness to to look at this while we're under contract uh, because you know that it's necessary in order to to make us competitive and 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 keep the staff where we need to and provide our kids our community with the education they need and they deserve so um, I just wanted to tell you that I appreciate it and the staff appreciates your willingness to consider it thank you thank you anyone else wish to be heard Anyone else wish to be heard? Seeing none, we'll close the hearing of the public at 6.54. Next, we have the proposed 2023-24 salary ranges and central office structure. 
Uh, thank you, Board President. I've shared with the Board um, and previously here that on April 21st, the central office team um, engaged in a process of, of reviewing all of the tasks. It's an activity called responsibility charting. And what we did was we took the responsibility charting activity and we looked at the strategic plan that the board approved in January. And we looked at all of the work that is required by law, by legislation, um, and as part of the work that we oversee as a team. And we did restructure central office. Um, and then in bringing to the board also the approved pay ranges for all of the positions, um, it creates an opportunity for us to clarify our organizational structure as well as the work um, and continues to keep the uh, ranges competitive to attract and retain talent. Is there a motion to approve? I'll make a motion that we approve the uh, salary proposed 2023-24 salary ranges in central office. Support. Support. <laughs> We're eager to serve. Eager. Okay, please call. Any questions, comments? Please call the vote. Uh, Mr. Williams, yes. Mrs. Grumberg? Yes. Mr. Grumberg? Yes. Dr. Early? Yes. Mr. Roscoe? Yes. Mrs. Rayford? No. Uh, Mrs. Richardson? Okay. That's the last item on the agenda. Meeting is adjourned at seven or six fifty seven.